What is up guys, Toasty Bros here, and today we're gonna show you how to turn these gaming parts into an awesome budget gaming PC. And we're gonna show you how to do it step by step and have a chance to win one of these gaming PCs. But before we dive into today's video, let's hear more from today's sponsor. Are you looking for top-notch electronics and unbeatable deals? Look no further than Micro Center, your ultimate tech destination. Why settle for less when you can have more for your money? Micro Center brings you unbeatable deals on top brands, ensuring you get the most value out of your money. One of their top deals for new customers the Creality Ender 3S1 3D printer for only $149. And if that doesn't suit your needs, you need to check out Micro Center's winter savings. It's full of deals on peripherals, laptops, components, and more. My favorite deals is Intel i9-12900K combo for only $399. It's great because you can save even more money by taking advantage of their submit a build discount. If you submit your PC build to Micro Center's build showcase, they'll email you a Micro Center coupon worth $25. And if you happen to be located in North Carolina, you're in luck. Because because Micro Center is opening a brand new store in Charlotte early this year. If you're interested in learning more about all of Micro Center's offerings, check out the links in the description down below or head over to microcenter.com. Big thanks again to Micro Center for sponsoring today's video. Now, let's get back to it. Guys, we're gonna speed run these parts because you're just here to know how to build the PC. So, we have the Ryzen 5 4500, which is a six core, 12 thread processor. It's an amazing CPU. We're gonna be using the stock cooler in this one because you guys need to see how to put on a stock cooler. We've always done aftermarket coolers. Now for the motherboard, we have an ASRock B550M HDV. This is a nice little budget motherboard because you do only get two RAM slots. You do get one four pin for the CPU, but this does support 5,000 series, 4,000 series, and 3,000 series out of the box, which is pretty awesome for the price. For RAM, we have 16 gigs of DDR4. This is just all reliable. This is T-Force Delta right here. RGB, 16 gigs total, dual channel, 3200 megahertz, more than enough for this build. And then for the SSD, we have an NVMe M.2 SSD. This is the Clev Cross 512 gig SSD. And the reason that we're not doing Gen 4 or anything is because the CPU right here will only allow the PCIe and the M.2 to run in Gen 3, so there's no reason to pay extra for Gen 4. So just keep that in mind, you know, if you do want the true Gen 4 support, go with something like a Ryzen 5 5600 instead. And for the graphics card, this is the RTX 3050. We went an MSI Ventus model dual fan card that will be perfect for this PC build for those who love Nvidia cards. We do want to mention as well, if you want to save some money, you can go on the used market and buy a 1660 Ti or 1660 Super level card. Save yourself about a hundred bucks compared to a 3050. But if you want to buy new and you want to buy Nvidia, the RTX 3050 is one of your best options at the price point. And for the power Power supply, we have a good old Sigotep GN 650W 80 plus gold power supply. Again, we use these Sigotep power supplies at PCBros.tech where we'll be selling the other PCs that we're not giving away. So go buy a PC today at PCBros.tech. But 650 watts, 80 plus gold, very solid power supply and room for upgrades in the future. And last for the case, we have the Lian Lee Landcool 205M, which comes with these big 140 mil RGB fans up front. They are ARGB. So if you do go for an aftermarket cooler, you can work with that. And it's micro ATX, really awesome build quality and looks really good for the price. Now Jax is going to start showing you guys how to build this PC by getting the motherboard, popping in the CPU, the RAM, and the storage, and then from there we're going to put it in the case, we're going to show you how to run everything wire-wise and get everything hooked up and ready to game, and then we're going to game on it and show you guys what it can do, and then talk about how you can win one of these at home. So let's get right to it. Alright guys, we got our B550 out on the table here, and it's a nice cheap motherboard. It doesn't come with much. It just comes with a SATA cable, it comes with a IO shield, and then we do get an M.2 screw to put in our NVMe. I'm going to start off with the cooler because since we're not using an aftermarket cooler we'll have plenty of room to get this on let me go ahead and open up my knife here our 4500 is going to have the pins on the cpu so you do got to be really careful with the step if you guys watch any of our intel builds or new ryzen 7000 series no more pins in the cpu but yeah lots of pins you can accidentally bend here so what we're going to do is line up the arrow there's a tiny little arrow right there that is probably really hard for you all to see and you're gonna line it up with the gold arrow right here. And just like usual, we just let it fall into place. If it happens to not fall into place, just kind of nudge it. Don't push down, just nudge. You should be able to close that latch. The latches are really easy on these. For some reason, AMD always includes these. A lot of aftermarket coolers will use uh, the AMD stock brackets as we call them, but their own stock cooler does not use it unless you get like a Wraith Max cooler, uh, which honestly they rarely include with CPUs anymore. It's definitely an interesting thing that AMD still does, but it's also kind of how their back plates stay on. And you do have to make sure you have a back plate in case any of you at home decide to ever like modify or build these back plates so they just fall right out. You wanna make sure that you hang on to that if you ever do an aftermarket cooler. Otherwise, if you ever try to sell your board or anything like that, you're gonna have to buy another back plate. So, 
thermal paste pre-applied, nice and simple. I like to face the logo away from the rim because if you put it towards the rim, sometimes it'll actually, as you can see here, it'll actually block one of your lanes. And then I'm gonna take the cable and you notice how I'm keeping it far away from the thermal paste. So I'm just gonna kind of tuck it here and then put this down. That's just a personal preference. You don't have to do it that way. Just obviously make sure that you don't pinch it between the CPU and the cooler. And just like I've shown you guys a few times now, you really wanna make sure you do opposing corners. So we're gonna go around like you're tightening the lug nuts on a car. Just do a little bit on each one until you get to the last one. Then you can kind of go ahead and crank it down. And the last one is, there we go. All right, so we got all four screws tightened. I'm gonna go ahead and plug in our CPU four pin. On this motherboard, you can't really screw this up. Sometimes they'll have two headers. One will say like CPU optional, one will say main. Just make sure you use the main one. And then I like to even kind of tuck the cable right underneath the fan there, make sure it's not hitting the fan or anything, but you see how clean this looks. They're gonna have no cables exposed. Now, let's go ahead and do a very satisfying step of installing the RAM. So what we're gonna do with the RAM, I'll do the furthest slot away for you so you guys can see. Normally, I have to tell you all, you know, don't forget to do slot one and three, but this one literally only has two slots. So you just fill both slots and that will run in dual channel. If you happen to buy a board that has four RAM slots, you're gonna wanna use the one that's furthest away from the CPU first and then skip one and then put it in the third slot. And that's how you get dual channel. So that's looking pretty nice now. Let's go ahead and go over to here. And we only get one M.2 with this. So that makes the decision pretty easy. We're gonna be using this one right here. Go ahead and open this up. We got our Kraus drive out. So here's our NVMe. These can only go in one way, just like the RAM. They have a little slot. And you're gonna put it in at an angle. So it's gonna sit just like that. And that's totally fine. That's how you want it. And we're gonna go ahead and swap this PH2 bit out for a pH one or even pH zero if you don't have a pH one, kind of the size comparison difference there. So we're gonna go ahead and get our single M.2 screw out. They don't give us any extra, they give us just enough. This is why the LTT screwdrivers are nice, get a magnetism going, otherwise these things just like to fall off. And just, just finger tight, you don't need these super tight. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is literally it for the motherboard at this point. Matt is gonna show you guys how to install the IO shield and then we're gonna get the motherboard in. All right guys, it is now time to install the power supply to get ready to install the motherboard. Now we're gonna get our case ready first. We already have the tempered glass side panel off by removing these thumb screws and we put them back in the case so you don't lose them. That's a good pro tip right there. But we also gotta take off this back panel as well, which still has the thumb screws. So we're gonna go ahead and undo these <laughs> thumb screws, my goodness. And we're gonna go ahead and take them and put them right back in. Now we have access to where the power supply is going to be installed. And Jonah's gonna show you guys real quick while I move this off to the side. That is where we're gonna put our power supply. And our power supply of choice again is this Segotep GN650 80 plus gold power supply. Go ahead and open it up here. Now this power supply is non-modular and that is an important thing to know because it's gonna give you a bunch of cables you need for this PC and some that you may not need, but that's honestly better for beginners in my opinion anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and pull out the cables. Look at all these it's cables. Don't get intimidated, it's really easy. Also comes with a power cord, do not lose that. That powers the PC. And this little baggie with some zip ties and screws you need to screw in the power supply. We also have a power supply tester, which is really cool. If you have any power supply issues, you put this on the 24 pin, plug, boom, you're good to go. So we're gonna move all this out of the way, take off this protective plastic wrapping, and we're gonna go ahead and undo all our cables here. Now what we're gonna go ahead and do is take our power supply, and this is very important. We want the fan going down, mainly because if you see on the case, this is where the power supply gets its air from, the bottom of the case. So don't put your PC on carpet, give your power supply fresh air to breathe in. So we're gonna take the power supply we're going to slide it in like so. And as you can see from the other side, some screw holes should line up. There you go. There's four screw holes right there. I'm gonna try to leave that right there and walk around. And you're gonna need your little bag here that I showed you with the screws that go for the power supply. These are called coarse threaded power supply screws. Here they are in this little bag. Dump them out right there. You gotta get all four of them. There they are, coarse threaded power supply screws. So we're gonna go ahead and take a uh, pH2 bit. I like to use pH2 when using power supply screws. You can use pH1 if you want to, but we're gonna go with pH2 with our LTT screwdriver. You don't need one of these, by the way, but they're nice. Take one of our screws right here, our coarse threaded power supply screws, and we're gonna go ahead and screw in the power supply. Power supply is installed. Now we gotta get the case ready for the motherboard, which we're gonna do something real quick because I noticed with this case, you see all these cables? They don't run the cables for the fans through the slots that they're supposed to go through out of the factory. What are you doing, Lee and Lee? Come on here. So we're gonna go ahead and take them. And this top one, we're gonna take both of the little strands of cables that come off each fan. We're gonna run these up through here. Might be hard to see on camera, but you can just throw them right up through there and we will deal with them later. And then we'll take these other ones right here and we're gonna throw them 
just straight down here. And we'll be able to tuck them and hide them away during the cable management portion, but they are out of the way now and they're at the back of the case so we can worry about them later. So now we have to get the IO shield installed. The IO shield is what blocks the IO and makes things look nice and clean. If you guys don't know which way the IO shield goes in, always line it up with the motherboard and know that the motherboard is gonna be going in this way. So then you want the IO shield to go in this way, but for this build guide, audio ports are always at the bottom. Keep that in mind. Line it up with the IO shield cutout in the back and we're going to push, 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 and push. That can be difficult sometimes, but you wanna make sure you push it all the way through. It'll be nice and secure. Now, before we go ahead and put in the motherboard, we do need to go ahead and grab our screws that are shoved in down here. Hello? Oh, there we go. It's got to tilt it a little bit. Now it's really nice with Lee and Lee cases. You get this nice box that comes with all the screws you need to screw in the motherboard and everything else. Comes with a little informational guide as well, some zip ties and everything. We're gonna need this screw bag to actually screw in the motherboard. So keep this to the side and we'll pull out some fine threaded screws. Now, if you guys watch our streams over on twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros, we've actually already built one of these PCs live for you guys to see. And I know because of that, there are no extra standoffs. These little risers in the case that allow you to screw down the motherboard, there are no extra ones which can happen and sometimes cause some damage to your components but if you follow our twitch stream you have seen this build already we're going to go ahead and take our motherboard and put it in the case it's time guys we're going to go ahead and lay it down gently make sure to line up the io with the io shield we actually have something that's pushing through a little bit some of our cables are being a little naughty and we're going to go ahead and make sure that everything lines up there is one of the standoffs this 24 pin needs to get out of the way there is one of these standoffs that is raised a little bit so you can actually sit the motherboard down and it will hold it in the place so you can screw in your motherboard. Now we need to go ahead and open up our little bag of tricks here. This is our screw bag that comes with the case and get out some fine threaded screws. Now this might look like a lot, but you wanna look for these screws. I'm gonna get you a couple more of them. There's your, there's your head. And then that one. <laughs> he said, one. what? There you go. Fine threaded screws. For comparison, here is a coarse thread power supply screw so you guys can tell the difference between the heads. And we'll go ahead and take these screws and screw in the motherboard. Very simple. There's actually a riser for every single screw hole. So all you gotta do is screw in from the top left all the way around. We're gonna do the top left one right here. Screw, 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 screw. Cool. Now that's how you screw in your motherboard all the way, but I'm gonna throw a little bit of a wrench into that because when we built this PC on stream, we realized the cleanest way to run the cables is behind this cutout right here, which some of the cables you need, like your 24 pin might be able to wedge your way through, which we're gonna try first before I take out a screw. But there's a chance you might wanna take out these screws, this one, this one, and this one to give yourself a little bit of room to move the motherboard up so you can run those cables through. But don't worry, if we do end up doing that, we'll let you know. But for running the cables, I think we'll be perfectly fine here. And as you can see, your motherboard is nice and secure. We have the power supply installed. We have the fans in the proper position. Now we just gotta get everything plugged up. And this is gonna feel like the scary part, but don't worry, it's gonna be very simple. We're gonna show you each plug individually, put in that graphics card, and then we're gonna get straight to gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to plug in some cables. This right here is the old reliable 24 pin. This is the main power coming off of the power supply. And rather than running it through here, I'm gonna opt that we kind of just shove it through this little spot right here because we have it. I mean, that's a lot closer to the motherboard that way. So yeah, here is the good old 24 pin that we fed through and we're gonna plug it up right here. <laughs> Make sure to line up the clip with the clip right there. We're going to push and you hear a slight click and we're gonna push these cables back through to Jackson. Right now is a good time to make sure you're not super tangled because once you run cables, it can get kind of hard to undo things. So got a clean run here. This right here is the CPU four plus four pin and we're actually only gonna be using four. So I'm just gonna, actually I'm gonna go ahead and feed it to you the full thing. Maybe you can get it in the way it is or maybe you'll have to split it, we'll see. Sometimes we can kind of fake it and make it look like it's an eight pin. <laughs> There you go. Oh, it's a, it's yes. a fake eight pin, <laughs> It's guys. a fake eight pin, ladies and gentlemen. You have the extra four pins for another motherboard if you do go that route, but yeah. there you go. All plugged in, very easy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and now just kind of preemptively get our PCIe power through. So this power supply can handle quite a bit. So it actually gives us two eight pins or two six plus two pins. I'm gonna go ahead and just feed these through this little cutout here. And we're not gonna be using them just yet. This just makes it a little easier. So here they are. We're just gonna push them off to the side. We'll use that to power our 3050 here in a little bit. I'm thinking HD audio next. So that is this little guy right here. It looks the same as the USB 2 header, except it is missing a pin closer to the middle of the pinout rather than the side. And we'll be putting that right above the power supply there. 
So yeah, so we ran it right through above the power supply. And here it is, good old HD audio, it says HD audio on it. We're gonna go to the far left, and make sure to match up the missing pin with the missing pin on the header. This is actually a front panel. It basically has the same pin out where it's missing it on the end, but this is actually an all-in-one front panel connector, which is kind of a fancy thing that newer cases are doing. You can just use this guy right here and plug it in right here to the front panel. Line up the missing pin, and look at that. Front panel has never been easier. And yeah, this case actually doesn't have a USB 2, so we only get this USB 3 connector, which is kind of hard to miss, honestly. It's keyed too, so you can't plug it in wrong, but really large blue connector, and I think, is that right underneath our 24 pin? Yep, there it goes. Right underneath the 24 pin, Same coming deal. through. Find We're gonna board. plug it up right there. Boop, slot it in, good to go. Okay, so at this point, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and give you the ARGB headers. So that's basically what gives our fans their nice lighting effect, and that's how you're able to change them as well. It looks like this, these are called three pin ARGB headers. It makes this one a little bit more complicated. What we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to add a, basically a hub or a uh, adapter. Which we'll link in the description. Yell at us if we don't. Yes, yell at us if we don't link these, but the one that I'm using is, uh, so we get these with our, our Vitru um, ARGB fans all the time, and we honestly rarely use them because most cases come with hubs. Lee and Lee just, for some reason, they don't have them, and I don't know why, but this motherboard somehow doesn't have ARGB on it. It is a little bit of an older board, so that could be why. It's also a really cheap board. So we're just gonna plug these in just like that, and then just like any other hub, it needs to be powered. So the power is going to be a SATA connector, which I'm gonna go ahead and plug in just like so. Here we go. All right, so that's plugged in, looking good. I'm gonna go ahead and before Matt throws in the graphics card, because I need to give him two fan headers as well, which I think we're gonna need a splitter for. Yes, yeah, so we'll need a splitter. splitter <laughs> Linked in the description down city. below. I know, this is one of those ones where I, I didn't plan this one quite as well. I should have gotten a, a slightly nicer board, because literally any other motherboard would have probably had more than one extra fan header, and it also would have had an ARGB header, but this board being as budget as it is, didn't come with any of that. All right, so now, these right here are called four pin fan headers. Sometimes they're only a three pin, so they look a little bit different, but they still plug in the same. And we're gonna need one more adapter. Uh, these ones are really easy to use, and these are even cheaper than the RGB headers. This is just a two to one. So basically two fans down into one fan header because this board for some reason only has one extra fan header on it. So these splitters are really nice to have on hand, especially for you guys building more than one PC. And where is that one? Front panel. Front panel, so we'll go ahead and run that right through here. There it is, and here comes our splitter, choo-choo. <laughs> and we're gonna plug it up chugga, right chugga. there. Where it says channel fan, which number is this? Channel fan two. Channel fan oh, two. Plugged up. Now we're ready for the GPU, aren't we? It's time, it's GPU time. All right, guys, we are now going to take this little 3050. Look at it, ain't it cute? And we're going to go ahead and install it into our PC. Now, first thing we need to do is remove this little cover right here for the PCI slots. So we're gonna use our Phillips screwdriver. We're gonna push this out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and make sure we find the right covers to remove by taking our graphics card and removing, well, this cover right here. Ugh. We're gonna go ahead and line up and see that we do need to remove the top two covers right here. And the best part about this being a slightly more premium case is none of them are break off. So you don't have to worry about doing this wrong and uh, having just a random hole in your case that you can't fill. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the top screw. And screw, and screw, and screw. We're gonna take the graphics card. Make sure this lock is disengaged. Take your graphics card. We're gonna go ahead and line it up like so. We're going to push in firmly. So you hear a click, look at that. Not, not an amazing click, but you know what? Not too bad. Then we're gonna take those same screws and screw in the graphics card. We'll take a click, we'll take a crunch. We'll take what we can get. In right here, boom. And then we're going to twist this back on so it's nice and secure. Now we're gonna take the PCI power here and all we need is a six pin. So we need to take off two of the pins on one of these eight pins, which can be kind of difficult sometimes, but you just have to push up the far left side. As you can see, two pins gone, we got the six. We're gonna go ahead and peel this back so we can then just tuck the extra cables back in this little cable management hole that we don't need. And then we're gonna take our six pin right here with this little latch right here, line up the latch on the graphics card, push in, and boom, just like that, our graphics card is powered, and man, you have yourself a gaming PC. All right guys, cable management time. This step does not have to be hard or intimidating, so I made this really easy because I already shoved all of these extra cables into the basement, and uh, as I always preach to people, I don't really cable manage 
in the power supply basement because that's when it starts to get kind of uh, complicated in case you ever need to do any troubleshooting or anything like that. If you have any hard drives or SSDs, it'll usually pull the cables out of them if you do that. So I like to leave the bottom kind of loosely managed and then just do a couple of separate runs here. Make sure you kind of pull everything tight as you go. Having good zip ties always helps too, instead of like the really dinky ones, you know, having some kind of nice thick cables that you can really crank down. These grommets are nice too. These grommets like cover the, cause normally you gotta be careful about running the cables in front of like open cutouts, you know? And then uh, we are gonna have to set, so this just uses a button for the ARGB like that. Um, so we will have to set that up once we turn the PC on, which we are ready to do now. I need to snip these actually. All right, power supply and on position. And here we go. Yeah, buddy. It's definitely not RGB. Can't quite agree with that just yet. Oh yeah. All right, we can go ahead and put our dust filter back on. And then uh, when I see, make sure the back cover goes on okay without having cables. Because sometimes when you put the back cover on, you end up getting some cables that kind of shove uh, back through. So we just want to make sure everything still looks clean. This is a nice single person back panel. How are we looking in the front, Jenna? Pretty good? Pretty good. These over, but yeah, I think that's, that's definitely acceptable grade right there. It's a good looking build. You can throw some extra zip ties or even like Velcro straps in these if you wanted to, but honestly, I think this looks pretty good. So at this point, we just gotta see how this thing does in games. I think we're gonna be able to get some ni very nice 1080p high refresh rate gaming on this. So let's dive into some gaming. All right, gamers, we are kicking things off with Call of Duty Warzone. Balance preset 1080p with quality DLSS, 120 FOV, and it's looking like we're gonna get 90 to 100 FPS, probably dips into the 70s here and there, but we're just gonna lock in with some resurgence and see what kind of performance we get with this PC. We have Warzone a lot of credit. It's gotten much easier to run. Uh, a PC like this, maybe a year ago, would probably struggle to get 60 FPS. They've really optimized the game a bit. Sorry, dude. Oh, goodness. Oh, someone else got him. Or did he fall? Oh, no, someone else got him. Ah, I shouldn't have committed to that guy. Maybe those scratch. Oh, no, no, they will not. Oh, maybe. Ah, oh, I thought I was actually gonna get a self off there. Oh. Yeah. Ah, oh, no. Oh, I should have the shotgun out. God dang it. Oh, I tried. Oh, I need to do a requeue. That was bad. To the museum we go. Wait, I shouldn't have gone here. I have no idea where any of the guns are. <laughs> that was broken as hell. Ah! Oh, God dang it. Are you, are you really marking me? Are you, are you, is, is that really what you're doing? This is toxic as hell. Do you see this? This is why we don't play this game. Callister, I want your reaction to that because that was the most toxic thing I've ever been a part of in a video game. Oh! Yeah, buddy! Want some glass break, what you doing up here, bud? Ah, they got me good. All right. Oh no, why did they give me this gun? That's why. <laughs> oh, hey, what's up? Ah, oh, oh my God. You know, I have another resurgence. I'm going after him again. Ah, uh, you know what? It was worth it. And Call of Duty ran pretty well. Very, very good results. 90 to 100 FPS at times on medium settings. Let's move on to the next game. All right, guys, we are playing Overwatch 2, and we decided to kind of stretch the settings a little bit. We're actually at 1080p, uh, and we're basically on ultra settings with FSR 1.0, and we're getting high refresh rate, guys. Yes, sir. Think about that. So, yeah, it's definitely a, this is a cheap combo. It's an interesting combo. You know, normally, we would tell people to probably go with a slightly better CPU for the 3050, uh, like one that's Gen 4 capable, but this one seems to be holding its own very well. Yeah, so hopefully we can get a little, little dub ski in here. But yeah, it looks pretty good. The milliseconds aren't aren't too bad. The the frame frame rate's looking pretty good. We're not getting any major stutters so far. And for the price, you know, we've, we've definitely built worse. <laughs> yes. 
This team said we need to push in. Yeah, we're already at 35%. Good job, team. I forget that Zenyatta has like a Superman punch. Oh, he walked right into that one. Ooh, oh my god. Oh, he was so Ooh, that was a 12 close. HP. Oh, I'm, I'm powered up. Yeah, oh, buddy. Just killed her. Oh, is my whole team dead? All no. my friends are dead. No. Now I am dead. Oh, no, not Bob. Oh, oh. that was so close. Gotta make sure she didn't get behind me because then you know it's all the map we go. Okay, you're old. Yeah. You know, that's old. Gotta make sure I don't just waste it on something dumb. Maybe a, not, not might be a good time. Oh, that was a horrible oh, time. No. I was not paying attention to my health. Tank die. Die tank, die tank. I can push her off the map too technically, but it's kinda hard. Oh my goodness. And how's like Yeah! Yeah, no, she was just tanking my damage. I will ah! die. I will get demeched and kill you. Yeah, yeah. Look at you. I bet you wish you didn't demech me now, because Lil Diva go hard from above. Hopefully, I didn't see where it came from. Little sneak attack. We'll never see it coming. From they above. Saw it, they saw it coming. <laughs> yeah. This could be horrible. No, this, they this all are good. gone. Oh wait. Oh huh? no, it's a steel trap. Oh. Yeah. Oh, there's so yeah. many. Yeah. Ah! My ults are just horrible. No. That would have been sick if I got him in midair. Forget the rest of my team. Y'all can blow up. <laughs> Dude, somebody killed this DPS. Okay. And that's an L. Yep, that's the L. Well, that felt strong starting off, but you know what matters is the PC stayed strong. The PC did really well. Yeah. So far, not a single issue, guys. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and run three more time spy compared to the other PCs we built here on the channel and then talk about how you can win one of these computers. All right, guys, so now that you built your gaming PC and we helped you benchmark it, it turned out really good. We were able to play eSports titles such as Overwatch at actually pretty much max settings 1080p and we got a higher refresh rate experience. And of course, AAA titles, because of the 3050 really carrying that 4500, it is no slouch in those either. Yeah, Warzone ran great, 90 to 100 FPS on balanced settings, taking advantage of FSR and DLSS, really good upscaling tech to make the same perform really nice. And in terms of 3D Mark Time Spy, we ended up with a score of 6,270 which ends up being a 10 cent per point score, which for comparison, that is the same cent per point score as the RTX 4060 Lenovo we just looked at in the Walmart versus Best Buy video. So all in all, the 3050, you know, there are other options out there that may be better price performance, but if you want Nvidia and you want to buy new, this is probably your best bang for the buck option. So let us know in the comment section down below what you think of this PC. And if you want to build one yourself, use the affiliate links in the description down below, but you have a chance to win one of these things. If you go to twitch.tv slash Tozy Bros right now, if you watch the video, we're going live on the day. We're giving it away. Mm -hmm. Go right now. You have a chance to win. And also, you can buy one from PCBros.tech. Use code ToastyBros2 and check out and save 2% on your next purchase. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our Twitch.tv slash ToastyBros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. But we also build a gaming PC every single morning on twitch.tv slash Toasty Bros for PC Bros. So it's a really fun thing that we do here. So make sure you guys check out the Twitch channel. And buy a PC from us. PCBros.tech. Use code Toasty Bros to check out. You'll save 2% your next purchase. See you guys later. Goodbye. Peace out.